approaching these films, I think what's great is you're holding a camera. And to me, that's this like layer of defense between the fright and reality. Move. We're gonna move in one minute. Ricky, one minute. And maybe that's not a good thing all the time. Because I've been in places in my career where I, I, I take my eyes off the camera and I look what's happening around me. I go like, how did I get myself into this situation? Documentaries range in scope. You can do something that's a lot more stripped down, but I find that the films that you've done, at least in the past, you're throwing yourself, yeah, basically straight first into the flames. Bring us into what it was like shooting this film. You are lucky as a documentarian because you get to work with experts in their field. When you're with professionals, you realize you get to lean in on their instincts and their insights. And so with this tornado film, it was unnerving at times, but I was going into this film to explore how these tornado chasers were approaching their craft and their career despite having families. It's looking at when passion and responsibility collide. When you do scripted, you have a script to follow. When you documentary, you're figuring it out as you go along. Mm -hmm. So how do you immerse yourself in that mm -hmm. environment when you're shooting something, knowing that what you're capturing is going to serve said story when you don't even know what the story is gonna be in the first place? I don't know how they're necessarily gonna end, but I always need to know two things. That's the physical journey of the film and the existential journey. And the physical journey is where my characters are actually moving in time and space. <laughs> in this case, it was them chasing tornadoes. Existential journey is, is more so what's going on beneath the surface. This is what's happening in people's brains. This is what's happening in the arc of them as a character in the film. It's really what are they learning and what's happening in the inside of their mind and heart. Rain doesn't scare me. If we're in rain beside a tornado, that scares me. Yeah. I can't see it. Yeah, I agree. Scares me too, buddy. I just have a hard time trusting your fear factor. Perhaps just because uh, at this point in the film, we haven't seen a tornado. Talk to Chris just about your desire, like, I just really want to see one land, you know? Talk from here, like, talk about what you actually want, don't use my words, but the idea, though, that we just need to communicate is we haven't seen one touchdown yet. Sure. Every minute I'm on these films, I used to think about, oh, what's the coolest shot? And then I'll come back to the edit with just a bunch of random footage that never wanted to work together. But once I was on set and I started thinking of those two simple things, what is the metaphysical journey, what's going on inside their heart and mind, and what is the physical journey, where are they actually going? And I would start focusing, asking, have I shot this? Have I shown them getting to the car? Have I got a shot of their eyes? Because maybe they're stressed. That's the metaphysical journey. Have I got the tension that's happening between them? Are they arguing? Have I, have I got enough coverage of that? Oh, but then there's a storm coming. Have I got shots of us driving towards it? You're thinking physical, metaphysical, physical, metaphysical. And that's all I'm thinking about as I'm filming. And then at the end of the day, I can start thinking about the bigger picture. And then I go, what happened today? Where's that going to work into the edit? Yes, we got the red box up. We got tornado warning. It's gonna be like right here. Oh, shoot. Tornado sirens going off in the town. We just went through. Very storm go tornado warning. I am fully engrossed in story. The cool shots are gonna happen. Yeah. Or I bring along someone like Zach, where if I really need to focus on story, Zach comes in and I had him just shooting a lot of gimbal shots as well as BTS. You did so much on this. So we were getting the cool shots, but I needed to make sure that the priority was story. Yeah, typically when you do these like GoPro shots, you're trying to find like something to hook on to. So almost every single space on this has been a good GoPro mounting spot. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. Is that why you have this? this yeah, it's for you. For the GoPro? Yeah. Uh, not in case we roll. No, uh, roll cages are for GoPros. <laughs> Most shooters just get 90% texture and 10% story. Mm -hmm. But for this, it was, at least in the final edit, it was 10% texture, 90% story. From my perspective, you're you're writing a shot list as you're shooting. You go, okay, there's this incident. Do I have them going to this thing? Do I? So you're basically writing as you shoot, as opposed to what narrative does, which is the reverse. <laughs> so this is crazy. How much lightning there is. Look at this lightning. You do want to plan, and you do want to have some creative rumbles before you go in. And so with my editor Lewis on this, we chatted about it, and he was the one who really gave me the inspiration. He's like, hey, just make sure you shoot like the, the actual grass or like the rain hitting the ground. 
he's thinking as an editor, like how can he cover scenes or how can he jump us along the edit? But he was also asking for what I think is one of the most important things as a documentarian is variety. Look at that right there. Look at all this. Lewis is a is a true professional editor, and he'll he'll watch. You know, he just puts them all in big long timelines, and he just plays it out, and he watches every frame. That's the mark of a good editor. And then what's great is when I ask him, "Hey, did we ever do this? Or is there so, or is like, do we ever get this shot?" He'll know, or he'll at least have an inkling of where it might be in in his edit. This video's image was brought to life by Film Convert Nitrate, a collection of film stocks and film looks that remove that cheap digital look and transforms it into something. Cinemagic. Here's how it works. Once you've downloaded it, open up your effects panel and go into Film, Convert, Nitrate in your effects panel and drag and drop it over your footage. Film Convert has every single camera imaginable from the Sony A7S to the Sony Venice, so make sure you grab the right one. I'm doing Sony A7S Mark III and I shot this in S-Log2. Boom, applied. I'm gonna use their Kodak film stock, but you can go through and choose everything from their Kodak to uh, Fuji. I love seeing that film grain. It just makes the image feel alive. But if you really like it, you can always increase the strength by changing the different film size that you're using. Something like an eight millimeter film grain is very prevalent versus something that's like a Super 35, a little less. And that's what we're gonna do. Super 35, a little less strength, so it's just a little bit of energy in that image. We're not gonna play with any of these wheels. We're just gonna go down to curves. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of an S-curve on to boost that contrast up. Yo, look at those clouds. And what I like about it is it has levels on it, which is something that I'm way more used to in photo editing softwares and not necessarily in video. You don't necessarily have to do this. I'm just a certain person who likes having LUTs, so I'll throw on Danny's LUTs that he has here. Looks a little intense. We'll just tone it down a little bit. And now we've just got a little bit of shape and color in our shadows and that film grain over top. And now what I can do is use this as a LUT. I can actually just create my own LUT out of this. This has definitely reinvigorated my excitement over color grading. Um, especially in Premiere, I find that the options are so limited within Adobe, but having plugins like Film Convert can really boost up that excitement with tools that you're familiar with. So if you've been wanting to maybe upgrade your color grading process, but not go as far as maybe going into Resolve, I'd say download Film Convert. You can also start plugging it into things like Resolve and accelerate your experience through there. It's really been the main tool to how I've been able to accelerate all this footage that I shot this documentary on. What was that, Mark? Was that... that was great man yeah yeah, cool. yeah yeah i think the only other thing i would suggest there is if you just get them to describe a bit more be like what are you seeing what was do you know what was damaged i remember when we were shooting this sequence here we had just gone to this town that had gotten hit quite mm -hmm. hard yeah in that moment as a documentarian because like i i am always trying to find like what is asking too much and what is not asking enough in that moment yeah when you see an emotional scene whether someone's going through something hard or whether you're filming people in a hard environment. When do you stop recording and when do you start recording? That's that's the thing you, you kind of learn over time, but I, I have to push past my discomfort and I invite people, I just continually invite them and saying, hey, is, is this something you'd want to share on camera? And you'll know, if someone says no, then I, then I don't push them. Uh, but I think a big thing for me is just always giving people the vision. I go, wow, what, what you went through is, is, is horrific. Would you be willing to share that so people know what happened here rather than hey tell me what you just said they to them it's taking but i want them to know that they can impart rather than them thinking i'm stealing their pain you know it's like you what do you want to share that's what was i always encourage people and then they'll share what's important and sometimes you just give them a bit more space and they feel more comfortable to continue to open up but i also ask questions not just like what happened here today i go like what how did this impact you well how did this make you feel like, did this scare you? Or And then if they say, yeah, I don't let them finish there. I say, why? I don't just let people off on a yes or no question unless like, you know, that's, you know, their silence says it all. You just invite people to continue to share. Outside is where I run to when things get tough. There was one time I was younger. Oh man, I was on a bike just like this, but half the size. And I don't know why I was crying, but I was crying. I remember I just rode for ever and ever, it felt like for hours, just bawling. This path that's in front of me, it feels like a tidal wave. 
And I don't mean in the sense I would ever give up. I just, I don't know. It's just not what was planned, I guess. Today's a really especially windy day. I've taped the mic on the inside of his shirt here. It's already coming off though. One thing that I don't think is known about this documentary is that mm -hmm. we were on the road for 10 days mm -hmm. and we shot 13 hours of footage just yeah. with your camera, then plus with mine. And in those 10 days, even though you're getting all this extreme footage, it's insane. What you're not seeing is the fact that we are in a car for probably 12 hours of these days, <laughs> getting about 20 minutes of actual usable footage. And at the end of the documentary, a principal shooting, we didn't actually get a tornado. You know what we can say right now? We're not in Kansas anymore? We're not in Kansas anymore. We are now in Oklahoma. Oh, no, 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 we're still in Kansas. We have traveled hundreds of miles. Even though we haven't caught a storm, the, the thrill of the chase has been almost as fun as actually seeing the storm itself. It often happens, even my film Rescate, I was expecting there to be some huge, crazy accident. And it always was the case that when I would leave these paramedics I was filming with, the second I would get back to Canada, the big one would happen. Oh, of course. And so you have to shift. And I think if you don't have the big physical moment, this, you know, we didn't have this big giant tornado, you have to explore the human side. There definitely is a lot of pressure. This is where we make our money from. We need to catch a tornado because it's in our name and you can't tell a story about chasing tornadoes if you don't have a tornado. These films, it's, it's just about what's happening to someone emotionally and what's happening in the relationships in their life. Part of documentaries is obviously catching those like moments and, and really seeing them happen. But I also recognize that you, if you missed it, you wouldn't like script it, but you'd be like, hey, like you'd set up a moment and mm. try and catch it on screen. I, I think a big part of it is letting moments happen naturally. And then if you feel you've lost coverage for your edit, if you don't feel you have a beginning, middle, and an end in the scene, or, or you were messing with your camera, I'll sometimes just jump in and be like, hey, can you do that again? You know, or like, or, or come over here. I try not to control it too much because then it just becomes performative. So I like to set up the scene and like, I'll explain them like, yeah, just come over here and you know, you can throw your laundry in or just keep doing that. Or, hey, do you mind turning this way? But then I let it play enough for a while because if I'm always talking, they're always remembering they're filming. And then also too, my, my editor hates it because my voice is in it all the time. What are the top mistakes that you make when you make documentaries? Oh, a big one in my early days was n not getting the counter shot. So when two people are talking, you'd hold the one shot forever and there you would, you'd think you were getting a lot of coverage, you go down to their hands or something. But the person listening is just as important as the person talking. The reactions. The of reactions stuff. of the people around them for so many reasons. One, it's easier to edit a conversation when you have the reaction. Two, the reaction's so important. How are people feeling around that person while they're talking? We're not filming hype reels. We're filming yeah. documentaries and it's very easy to get lost in just cool shots versus stuff that actually can kind of push the ball forward on a story. And I stor stories brought up a million times. I feel like sometimes it's just like a blanket statement to say about these, it's all about story. But it is. Yeah, and it it's, is. it's the vessel that carries the audience it through is. watching something. It is, it absolutely is. Like always be thinking about the edit when you're filming. I, I, I'm always preaching the principles of story, but you gotta go work with some bad footage to know what you actually need on set. And it, it always comes down to, did I get enough emotion? Did I get enough of their face? And did I get enough coverage to actually create good scenes? And then ask yourself, did I get enough to tell a beginning, middle, and end of those stories? And go shoot a six minute documentary, a three minute documentary, and try to tell both those stories through one film. And that practice will make you the best documentary director ever. So doing this documentary with Mark was me stepping out of my comfort zone to a brand new level. Like I cannot stress enough how terrified I was of shooting a tornado documentary. And I almost said no to this opportunity. The last goodbyes. I promise we won't kill him. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> this is a big moment for you. A lifelong journey of avoiding tornadoes. And now it's like somehow I've wound up 
with you chasing tornadoes. I promise, we'll keep them safe. You got Mark's stamp of approval. It's a terrible stamp of approval. I cannot stress enough how much I learned being beside Mark in this two week journey of chasing my worst nightmare. If you wanna learn as much as I learned following Mark for these two weeks, I highly recommend taking a look at his course, The Art of Documentary. It is the best online film school I think that's out there and you could be one of thousands of students part of their community. Also, please take a look at Chase It From The South. Mark poured his soul into it and so did his editor, Lewis Gordon. You can tell, totally tell. Thank you so much for listening, watching, and hopefully learning as much as I did. Take a look at all of the fun peeps below and Film Convert Nitrate. Goodbye. I'm doing the hand wave thing because I never know how to end these videos. Thank you.